Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Brandon Taylor. I'm the President and CEO of OneSoft Solution. Thanks for taking the time out. Um, OneSoft Solution is a born in the cloud SaaS solution. We launched out of the Microsoft Incubator in 2016. Today, we have 14 customers. We're focused on integrity management within oil and gas. So Fortune 50, 100, and 500 customers. I'll talk about those quite a lot in this presentation. Uh, we focus on um, basically the integrity of pipelines. So if you have a pipeline in anywhere in the world, you're a potential customer of OneBridge. Today, we have 180,000 miles under subscription, um, complete SaaS solution, no hardware. Uh, we focus on data and we're aggregating that across the industry and uh, just some stats a little bit um high insider ownership so we're completely invested um 4.4 million in cash um you can see that we have no debt right so um i'll talk about cash quite a bit um this year we've given some outlooks um on that revenue and kind of where we're projecting on cash so we'll talk about that a little bit a normal disclaimer uh, information in our deck. Uh, so basically what, and this industry is probably aware oil and gas, when you say that's a laggard industry. Um, I'll talk about like our first four of our five customers. We were their very first SaaS solution in the entire enterprise. Uh, these are Fortune 500, like Phillips 66. You know, Buffett owned 10% of that company at one point. We were their very first cloud solution in, in back in 2017. Um, so really in this industry, there's three things that really kind of drive their business is can you make them money, help them save money, or reduce the risk. Uh, we do two of those really well. We help basically reduce the risk profile of that pipeline. Um, there's a release every 1.7 days somewhere in the U.S. Um, we basically help try to mitigate those release events for pipeline operators and super efficiency from a perspective of cost savings. So we'll talk about that quite a bit. Uh, just generally, we save operators. We have spent a lot of time on ROI and metrics around that, about 10x, um, basically, their operating costs over the, over the contract value of our solution. Some financial stats here. Um, we've been growing the business pretty significantly. Uh, just last year, as an example, from 22 to 21, we increased uh, revenue 55%. Um, and over the last 26 quarters, 76% CAGR year over year, over quarter over quarter, right? So um, pretty significant. We, we gave guidance that we're going to hit um, 10 million in our modeling if we could just keep doing what we're doing. Just to kind of give you a sense, um, every year since we've been in business, we've added roughly around 1 million in ARR annually, excluding the COVID year. So if you look at our modeling back out, to five years from now, if we keep doing what we're doing, uh, we should be approaching 50 million in revenue, uh, top line. What that means from an EPIDA perspective, assuming you know, everything kind of stayed the same is we're forecasting cash neutral sometime this year. Next year that drops down or EPIDA drops to 17%. By the time we get it kind of in a modeling from a, from a uh, five-year perspective, it's like at 40%. You can kind of see that trend here um, in the charts, and we've disclosed this pretty significantly in our MDNA and our last guidance on MDNA on those pages. So you guys will get the deck. You can kind of take a look at it. Uh, what we also, as we've gone um, as a SaaS company and subscription based um, on, on top line, we pivoted a lot on pricing. We're now down to a one price variable on mileage. So as operators load miles into our solution, based on the functionality, that's really all we need to know from them. What this illustrates is that as we onboard new customers, we get a lot of mileage and then it takes some time to onboard that. So basically this helps kind of investors get a sense for by year, um, the miles that came in and then how much of that is loaded. So you can kind of get, you know, way back, we used to kind of give a general guy, uh, model of around $100 per mile on an annualized basis. That's what this bottom line is showing you. Right now it's averaging about 113. So we onboard customers and then it takes some time to basically get all of their mileage. Just so you're kind of aware, what I mean by that is a pipeline operator, if they have liquid, they have to inspect their entire pipeline every five years. So they run these tools called pipeline inspection gauges down them um, and they've been doing it for decades. That's the data that we consume in our solution to figure out if they have anomalies on the pipe that are growing that are gonna cause release events. 
and help them isolate where they need to go do digs, excavate the pipe. Uh, if you're liquid, it's five years, gas, seven. So, you know, you have 10,000 miles of pipe, you're going to do a fifth, a fifth, a fifth. Not exact, but pretty similar. So hence, that's why you're seeing, as we onboard customers, the consumption of those mileage generating revenue for us is a lag over time. That's what you're seeing here. Give you some idea of who our customers are. So these are Fortune 50. Uh, we have two super majors. Uh, two of them are rolling our solution around the world. Uh, they're going to start in the U.S. You know, they're onboarding in India, the UK, Kazakhstan, so different areas around the world. Um, energy transfer, to give you an example, they have 120,000 miles of pipe. They're the largest pipeline operator in the US. And they're an aggregator of other pipelines. They just bought two other companies. So those miles come in. They're rolling our solution out across 45 di different divisions across all of the United States, right? <coughs> Sorry. I'll give you an example. A colonial pipeline, um, they're our customer during um, the big event. So um, our solution was the only one running at that time. Just kind of gives you a sense. And then Gemini is in Australia. So this isn't just a US, uh, this is an international problem. And um, only difference there is we expand regionally across, this would be partner led. You always have to consider support and language is kind of the two things because we've done that in our previous business. So. Uh, we work very strongly with Microsoft. Um, they've been a partner for 18 plus years or so. Um, they have a, a energy um, division that's in Houston. They have a Microsoft Technology Center there that's focused on energy. And so basically they um, bring us into companies at the CIO level. And um, what they're doing is this industry kind of moves to cloud and digitally transforms their business. <clears throat> Thanks, sorry about that. They basically are helping them not only, you know, get off of old on-premise SQL Server and stuff like that, but, you know, Microsoft Teams and all of that stuff. And this is one of the consumption things on their cloud, which is Microsoft Azure. So we and a lot of these institutions like Worley or Valero was the last client, took us about 18 months to get through their IT as again, we were their very first cloud solution last year, right? So now they're rolling that out to different divisions around the world. So how do we improve the industry? Um, lots of through years. Um, this industry is regulated by FIMSA, which is under Department of Transportation stands for Pipeline Material Sa Safety Hazardous Act. Uh, what that organization does is audit these companies. So when there's a release event, they're there, they've defined regulation to help them identify when they should do excavations and immediately or in the next 60 days or 180 days, those types of things. What we really do is basically take that silo data, whether it's related to internal corrosion or external, or it's related to this tool data, which is today all siloed. Um, just to give you a sense, 80% of the customers that were on that board uh, are running their entire integrity process, meaning they run these tools and determine how, which ones they need to dig in Microsoft Excel. Uh, very highly educated engineers, chemical, mechanical engineers, but they're still doing that in Microsoft Excel today. 80% of them. Uh, we've only seen like two, three systems where they'd actually built something in-house around a database. So we're taking that Excel process and bringing them into the 21st century here as far as how do we make that data actionable and help bubble up to the top, which ones are the most threats to that pipeline, right? So we're basically doing that. Um, and what we like to say is we're becoming the data platform, not only for a single operator, for the industry. And what that means is that we're really one of the first companies where operators have voluntarily give us data. We have no pushback from them. And then we share the learning. So if we write a machine learning algorithm from one operator, we can actually launch that as a SaaS solution, run about a six week cadence where our solution takes feedback from these customers. In six weeks, they'll all get the same version updated and all you need is a browser to run it, right? Well, that learning from one operator then gets shared across every other operator. Very technical in, in engineering sense on what that learning is, but um, lots of use cases from one operator to the another operator where they may have been audited from release and every other operator wants to make sure they don't have that same scenario. We help them basically uncover that. This is uh, just an overview and we're software companies, so we always like to show software. Cloud-based solution, um, the solution is called Cognitive Integrity Management. Um, 
We have a team of data science, machine learning individuals that basically help write our ingestion algorithms and alignment algorithms. But this is um, embedded Microsoft Power BI, which everybody is moving to in the industry. So they're very familiar with this technology and we embed it right into the solution. But basically it's showing you the assessment planning, which tools am I gonna run? When am I gonna run them? What vendors am I gonna use? This is called a unity plot that basically shows them how well that tool is performing and whether it's overcalled or undercalled anomalies that I should be aware of. Um, and then it basically takes them through and aggregates all these different data sets across their different little departments inside the company into one spot. So as an integrity engineer, you can look at this data and say, okay, this one has been growing for the last 20 years. And you can see from the last run to the previous, it really grew. And this is where it is in the world. So we've embedded Azure Maps um, within it. And then we've built a bunch of custom 3D visualizations so they can really see these anomalies over time. So like the last 20 years, which has never been done, right? And then what else is around them, right? So it basically aggregates this information into one specific plant, uh, new modules that we're building, internal corrosion. So this helps them manage, you know, they have to inject chemical in the pipeline to understand um, and kill microbial growth that's inside the pipeline that travels down with liquid. Um, so we help them manage that. And then enterprise level reporting, meaning across your entire enterprise, how many immediate threats do I have on my entire 10,000 miles of pipe? This tells you. And where are they, right, um, as far as I dig? Uh, what, two big things cost operators a ton of money. One is running these, two is actually doing excavations to fix the threats on their pipeline. A dig in the middle of Oklahoma might cost you 30,000. A dig down, down Pasadena might cost you 150,000 for a three by three foot, right? So it's very significant where these digs are and it's one of their biggest expenses. Um, so this helps them forecast out their dig budget for the next five years and make sure that they're getting the right anomalies when they go do those digs. So that kind of gives you a sense of what the solution does. Um, our operators basically have got to the point where in this integrity space, they want SIM, that's short for Cognitive Integrity Management, to be their system of record for ILI management. So their internal corrosion, external. So all of their integrity engineers log into one solution every day. Job. We have roughly about 500 users that are active in this solution across those operators. Uh, comprehensive growth strategy. So uh, we keep expanding the customer. So if you go back to the revenue projections, um, 9.1 of that, 32% was basically 6.9, I think, was from existing customers. So we're growing that customers. You saw that projection on that. Um, we do not only just software, but we're also doing uh, lots of other projects with them um, that extend out from software and our services practice. Um, we're really trying to increase the product footprint. Um, we launched internal corrosion last year. Um, we're in uh, three kind of final stages of that, and then um, a bunch of benefit analysis. Uh, one thing about these customers is they're pretty laggard in their sell cycles. Um, we can go literally 12 to 18 months um, in cycles. We can go 12 months and then pause and then pick it up again and next year. They typically budget. Um, in the fall, so they'll spend this time basically, and then in August, September, October, they budgeted for 2024. So we try to hit that window of cycle. Um, but to my previous point, right, when we look at that from a year over year perspective, uh, there hasn't been a year, right, that we've added at least a million top line, which exponentially grows as they start consuming the solution. And it gets easier as we go. I think one of the things that we try to illustrate is this growth thought leadership in industry. Um, we just were up in um, BAMP conference this last year, and we got invited to their Shark Tank, uh, which is basically, as you're all familiar with Shark Tank, um, they had a bunch of operators there. We did a seven-minute pitch, as did a, a bunch of other vendors, and, and the feedback we got is we won it. They all voted hands down um, pretty unanimously across the board that this technology is going to be a game changer. Uh, we have uh, one operator in Canada, so that's a huge market up there that we're trying to attack as well. Um, but as you look at from a lagger perspective on that side, they typically be on the other side of the curve. Um, we have user group conferences twice a year. Um, we did roundtables. This will be our first year um, this fall that we're actually going to bring all of the companies together and their employees user group conference. 
So there'll be a huge event where we can actually do real, you know, live training sessions. They can meet each other, talk about it. Um, so that's happening for the first time this year. And those are super important from the perspective is this, as big as this industry is, it's super small. Um, they know we all, everybody knows each other all on the same committees. You go to these conferences, they're all on the same conferences. Uh, a lot of the employees jump from operator to operator. So, um, you know, you'll get an employee that's running our solution, go to an operator that's running Excel and say, we really need to look at this. Uh, that happens very frequently. That's mostly how we get a lot of our lead referrals is I can't believe you're not running one stop one bridge. And then we start doing the process there. Just a little bit about kind of where we are. We have an innovation lab um, and that's about idea creation. Um, as you can appreciate in this space, given that they're just starting um, their core integrity workflow, there's a lot of white space on new solutions. There isn't daily that we have a board of stuff. Um, the question that we always get as a data science machine learning company is that you need a lot of data. And so we've spent a lot of time on our ingestion algorithm, basically making sure that data uh, we can adjust we've written Bayesian models to basically make it easier for them to get it into the solution at scale. Uh, again, if you have 120,000 miles of pipe, you know, you need to be able to drop the data in and start getting some value from it instantly. Uh, so that's what the, the lab is focused on is making sure that we identify those opportunities and then we vet them um, through a bunch of software kind of models on which ones get prioritized, uh, mostly about what we call SAM. So what we can, you know, not just TAM, uh, you know, the target address, it's the service of what can we address in the space related to this? They have budget, they're already spending today. And then um, how fast or what's the effort? Because we always do that value effort proposition and then time to revenue, right? So we're really trying to get to this whole solution. Um, you know, if you follow um, crossing the chasm and software, crossing the chasm, uh, we think we've done that. Now we've got to really focus on what that is. So um, what they tell us, our customers, we're a customer-driven software company, um, not a, you know, behind the black box. They tell us um, what to build. So we've got ILI pretty solid, internal corrosion, external risk. Um, those are the main things that we're working on to basically hold, to roll out this whole solution within integrity management. And then from there, we'll start looking at different sections in there. Um, but we're really in that stage three right now, as far as kind of that market, you know, we want to get this majority market. Um, underway. Investment highlights. Um, first mover advantage. Um, we've had that for some time now. We keep looking in our rearview mirror, figuring that at some point, you know, competition is going to come up and and start having that. That has yet to happen. Uh, you know, as bad as COVID was, it's probably good for us. And that um, there's legacy solutions out there um, that are on-prem and it's quite an uplift for them to go re-platform that and that investment is very significant. Uh, so uh, we still, when we go into deals, um, it's foreign to us. We've been a software company for 22 years, right? This one is the latest. Um, there had never been a case where we'd go into a deal and it would be, you know, vendor A versus vendor B. What here's how you do feature A, B, you know, comparison stuff. It isn't that with us. When we go into deals, it's this is how we do it today, typically in Excel. How do you do it? Um, which that's a different sales process, and it takes a lot of time because you're invest. They're invested in that process, and this isn't um, just to kind of give concept on. This isn't that typical B to C. This is B to B, right? So when they make the investment, these are you know three to ten year recurring SaaS agreements. So they're going to disrupt their organization. And what I mean by that is they're going to disrupt the process. They all are driven through what they call an integrity management program that audit FIMSA comes in and audits. Show me how you do step A, B, and C. When they're done with our implementation, they typically rewrite that section of their IMP, and now they follow the one soft. SIM process. So it's not insignificant. It's in their, you know, audited processes with FEMSA and they don't just willy nilly that. That's going to be a, these are Fortune 50, 100, 500 companies, right? Big, large organizations. So the first mover advantage, um, the longer and the bigger the moat that we build, uh, the more stuff comes to us, not only internally. As an example, one of the super majors right now, we're working with them to integrate to their SAP implementation so they can roll it out across the world. Uh, once we're done with that work, that SAP implementation will automatically go apply to other operators who have SAP. 
right? So those are type of implementations that we do. Uh, insiders, 30%, um, you saw that. Um, ESG, there's you know been some debate about that, but we are going to pick up that. We just um, did one initiative. We try to limit kind of the initiatives we do per year. The latest one we just did was SOC 2 Type 2. Again, puts us way, like, again, we're the one of the first cloud solutions. Now we're a cloud solution that took us 18 months to get through that process. To have SOC 2, that really helps the IT initiatives when we do the SOC 2 Type 2, and we've already seen benefits from that, quite frankly. Uh, recurring revenue, 70% uh, plus gross margins, 76, 70%. Uh, our only at the top is Azure, so that's Microsoft's cloud. That's and we pass that cost on to clients. So it's just our development costs, which we think is at scale. We can even get further. And then Microsoft, and we're also looking. We did an acquisition last year. We keep do, looking at acquisitions M&A to help us kind of not organically grow, but grow the top line and both bring in maybe legacy stuff where we can get additional customers and more importantly, expertise. We're up to 41 employees. So we want to expand that footprint. So we become the um, integrity management, you know, footprint within these operators. And then you've seen the, the, the uh, capital structure. I think that's it. So I think we have five minutes or three minutes probably now for a uh, questions, Q and A. Any questions? Yep. So if I, I'm supposed to repeat the question. So the question here is, I think related mostly to this on that bottom line. Um, our last PR was, you know, 130. So that, that number fluctuates. You can see the fiscal 23, 130, 97 at the bottom. You can see over time, this is about um, how much people have not only signed up, but ingested it to generate revenue for us. So the question is, if I got it, um, Jeff, is, this number will fluctuate as we add new customers. So like if we add another big customer example, it's gonna go back down until they have time and then it'll go up. So it'll, that'll happen um, over time. But really what we're really trying to do is that consumption economic model now is that we feel really solid about, and we always feel like we're solid, but there's always new stuff, SAP, different integrations on the core platform. Uh, we're getting ready to do a strategy meeting at the end of May where we'll kind of probably refine a little bit on how we do that um, and probably do some announcements around what that looks like um, for investors so they can kind of get a sense. But on the consumption economics, the question is, if I caught you, is how much will internal corrosion as, as you get, right? So we did that in an MDA in a, a few years. We had a table of TAM. Uh, we'll probably refine that more as we go over time, I suspect, and kind of get more into the SAM. Uh, we've got two customers on that now um, and a bunch of benefit analysis. And then, as you know, we learn through each customer. So some of that is still kind of up in the air. I thought I wish I could answer that question specifically because they're paying today um, legacy stuff. So the question is, can we, you know, vendor A to vendor B, which will be one soft, and then how much incremental can we get on top of that? And then year over year, just to kind of give you a sense, we add an innovate, innovation escalator into our SaaS agreement. That's a percentage increase over time on related to that. So I wish I could give you exactly what that's going to be, but I think we'd have to model that um, to see um, what each consumption economic model is going to add. I have 30 seconds. Sorry for the length here. Did that answer it? Probably not exactly, but any other questions real quick? 
Okay. Um, thank you so much for taking time and I have sessions tomorrow. So there's probably slots if you want to sign up still. Thanks.